Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL, I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video where I get to talk about the Midnight Mule League, how people are doing and I get to talk about my team as well. It's the series where I get the fewest views but that's okay because I'm just kind of recording how my season goes because it might be interesting. It's certainly interesting for me. I'll also show the cost of my transfers. I don't mind taking hits so I'll look at the cost of my hits and how they've been performing over the last few weeks. The first thing I like to do in these videos is to look at the Midnight Mule League and to see who the top scorer is. And for game week 12, it was Andre Bulbeck with BB United and they scored 66 points, which is very good considering there's no Arsenal players and no Man City players. So looking at their team, they've got Alisson in goal, they got, who got 15 points. He's not owned by many managers. Dello for six, not very highly owned. Shah for five, not many people owning him. Trippier for nine, everyone's got Trippier. Captain Trossard. Trossard was a bit of a meme for game week 12. I never got in Trossard. If I did, I don't think I'd have captained him. Not when you've got Alisson. Obviously, Alisson's going to be the best player to captain. Uh, Zaha for eight, Mitrovic for six. So that was uh, 66 was a very good score, considering what the average score was like. Then on the bench, they had Henderson with 11. So that's just showing off, getting two double-figured keepers out. And then three players that didn't actually play. Stroik was on the bench but didn't play by the looks of it. I actually saw the Leicester Leeds game on telly and Leeds, in some ways Leeds were good, very entertaining, but on the other hand Leeds were shocking. <laughs> Defensively they were extremely bad. And the transfer they did was they got in Mount for De Bruyne. De Bruyne got nothing so that was an extra three points I guess for the week. Top of the league is Stephen Henderson with Easy, still there. 734 points so he's only leading by four points now so he's got to be a bit careful I think this is his team so any big players there Trippier for nine everyone's got him Zaha for eight Mitrovic for six they're popular Pope for six popular Webster for six quite a few people did have Brighton defenders but good team top of our league if he leaves any comments you should listen to him because he's clearly better than I am on his bench Ward for nine and then three non-players the transfer, they got in Gray, Gay, have trouble saying his name, and Salah and took out James and Madison. James and Madison weren't playing, so that was kind of worth it. But it'd be interesting to see, is he going to keep Salah or do something else with the team like Foden and Saka, which is a very popular move. I wanted to just mention in fifth place, Celebrating Victory, who's on 699. I did a video earlier this evening where I talked about Celebrating Victory because they're one of the teams that is following the 5% series. So all Sarah Jane is doing is watching my video, following my instructions, and she's got 699 and she's beating me. So that's great. So if you've not checked out the 5% series, I'd like to recommend it, especially if you want help with your teams. I am right down here in 18th. And that's in my own league, so that's not great, is it? But I shouldn't complain. I'm, I'm doing right and this is probably better than I do this time of year normally. So this was my team. No big hitters there at all. Actually, it was very disappointing. I Southampton hadn't kept any clean sheets all season and they're away to Bournemouth. So I thought that playing Bournemouth, Smith, Billing and Solanke was a really good idea. Had a chance of getting a load of points. And they didn't. Southampton won 1-0. Bowen won a penalty. And if he'd scored the penalty, then he'd probably be on maybe seven points. Allison wouldn't have got the clean sheet, wouldn't have got the penalty save. I know these are all little things, but that's kind of how close the margins are to potentially having a good week. My bench had City and Arsenal players on, so there's nothing I could have done about that. So I got 53 points in total, game week rank of 1.6 million. Overall point six six four. overall rank just outside the 1.1 million mark. So I've got three green arrows in the last four weeks, but I'm worse off now than I was in like game week nine. But like I said, this is probably the best I've done this time of year, and I'm perfectly relaxed about I'm perfectly relaxed about my position in the league. Long, long way to go. The chips make a big difference. FPL Game Week website, and there's probably a link below this video. They have a content creators league, so you can look at some very popular content creators and see how they're doing. And when you look at it, they were put in where you would appear in the league. So I like to look at this every week. Top of the content creators is FPL Raptor, which is Ross at the moment. Great channels, worth watching him. In third, someone else they will watch is Harry. They're both great guys, great to watch. I'm right down in 48th. I think I was 49th last week or last game week. 
I won 664, which is the same score as Holly Shan, someone I watch. I also watch FPL Mate. He's great to listen to. There's not much in it, and he was unfortunate with some of his picks. But he's a lot of fun. He wears his emotions on his sleeve. And he's very excited if you watch his videos. He's, yeah, a high energy. He's one of the highest energy uh, YouTubers, I'd say, on the old FBL. I need to remember because I keep forgetting. That's why I keep having it in here. 181 subscribers. Very excited about that. It's very, very pleased. That's good. The last video that's about my team, I did release it a day late, so that didn't help. Got 105 views, 7 comments and 14 likes. So if you do like this video, a like is very much appreciated. So my transfers, what I like to do with this series is look at the transfers I did, especially if I took hits, and see if it was worth it. So game week 9, I took out Odegaard and Jesus because we knew we had a game week 12 blank for them, and brought in Vardy, who was at home to Forest, and Billing. I did that because I used to live near Leicester, and I thought it would be great to see Vardy smash Forest as it's a local rival, but it didn't work out. So this particular pair of transfers was bad. The two that I took out would have got 27 points. The two I got in only got 26 points. And I took a four point hit. So overall, it was minus five doing this. But at the time I did say I'm doing this partly or mainly for the fun aspect. It wasn't like a sensible choice. And I knew it wasn't a sensible choice. So I'm fine to lose five points because it was fun. Game week 10, I took out Trent and De Silva. This was before Trent was injured and got in Smith and Zaha because I thought Zaha, Crystal Palace, very nice run coming up. So we've had three game weeks so far to look at what's happened here. So far, Trent and De Silva have got 12 points and Smith and Zaha have got 21 points. So this is a net gain of five. So even though I took a hit, I made five points and there's one week left to see what happens here. So it could go either way. Trent could do really well this week and Zaha not. Or possibly the other way around. Game week 11 transfers. I'm just mentioning this because I did this just for game week 12. So it didn't cost me a hit. I took out James. And a lot of managers were bringing in Crystal Palace defenders. Because they had quite a nice run. But I didn't need a defender apart from for game week 12. So I brought in Dunk. Dunk got 8 points. James didn't get anything. Of course he's not playing. It didn't cost me anything. So that was a net gain of 8 points. So that was completely worth it. Dunk will probably just be sitting on my bench for the rest of the time up to game week 16 but that's fine I saved a bit of money I got money to spend elsewhere so that was a good move in my opinion game week 12 so this game week we just had early this week I took out Madison and Vardy and brought in Salah and Solanke now Madison was banned for this week Vardy he's just been coming on for a few minutes at the end of the game and I thought yeah it's time to move him on and I had a chance of getting Salah and there's a reasonable chance Salah might get some points. He's got some nice games coming up. And Solanke as well. I thought those two together might be quite good this week. Solanke at home playing Southampton who can't keep a clean sheet. I thought it was a good idea. Madsen of course got nothing. Vardy got two. Salah three. Solanke two. Now when I saw the team sheet for Leicester that was a bit worrying because Vardy was starting. I thought oh no I've made a mistake here. But fortunately Leicester won the game 2-0 and Vardy didn't get involved. So I didn't get stung with that. And of course, we've got three more weeks to monitor how this transfer went. But at the moment, I'm three points up, but it cost me four points to take the hit. So I'm one point down on this pairing at the moment. Obviously, if I take Salah out before the end, I won't be counting his points from that time on. But with transfers, if I'm taking a hit, I like to take a four week view. I haven't done any transfers yet. I've not decided if I will or not. If I do... I'll record them and show them next week. And if you follow me on Twitter, I always post my team before the deadline. So you'll get to see what transfers I have made if I do make a transfer. And hopefully my Twitter links down below. But predictably, it's Midnight Mule FBL. So my lineup is I have Edison in goal at home to Brighton. Perisic home to Newcastle. Cancelo home to Brighton. Trippier away to Tottenham. But Trippier gets five to eight points week after week. Tottenham don't get a penalty, they might not score, so I'm kind of okay with that. Zaha away to Everton. Defensively, Everton are okay. They've actually been quite good recently, so that may be no goals or maybe one goal. Salah away to Forest. Bowen at home to Bournemouth. Martinelli away to Southampton. Then I have Haaland as my captain. Haaland's got the old mule hat on. That's what this is. This is the mule hat. Uh, Mitrovic's away to Leeds and Solanke's away to West Ham. And then on the bench, 
I've currently got Ward and then Billing, Smith and Dunk. So I was originally intending game week 13 to bring in Foden and Saka. That was my plan going back a few weeks. And I knew I could bring in Salah and then swap him around. But the problem I've got now is to bring in Foden, who would be my first choice, I'd have to take a hit. Because I already have three Man City players and none of them are a midfielder. So I'd have to, for example, lose Edison and then some midfielder, say Zaha, to bring in Foden. And I don't think Foden's guaranteed to score more than, for example, Zaha this week. And certainly Foden plus another keeper, I don't think are guaranteed to do much better than Edison and Zaha. And Salah might do really well against Forrest. Bowen against Bournemouth. And so the different permutations I've looked at, it's just not worth it. And I'd be better off doing it next week when Bowen's got a more difficult fixture. So if I lost Bowen next week, it's not so bad. But I may decide to keep Bowen. I know Bowen missed the penalty, but he did win a penalty. And from what I saw of the game on television, because it was on Amazon Prime, he was actually really, really good. He could have got several assists if the rest of the team were a little bit better. So I think Bowen can still get quite a few points. Of course, I'm not going to take Martinelli out. I've got too much money in him. So my current plan is I'm getting neither Saka nor Foden this week. The only thing I may do is I'm nervous about Perisic. He may not start. And if he doesn't start, he's probably going to get one point when he comes on. Maybe get an assist. So I may swap Perisic and Mitrovic for maybe Darwin and a very, very cheap defender. So I may do that and then I'm stuck with Darwin. But the problem with that is Darwin's had a knock and he may not be playing. So I'm probably going to, if I do that, I'll do it late tomorrow morning when we've got some more information. So that's the only potential transfer I've got in mind at the moment. And not having Foden and Saka is a bit of a differential, I think, especially in the content creators, if you watch them on YouTube and Twitter, everyone's going for that pairing. So I'm being a bit different by not going for that pairing. So there we have it. That's my plan for game week 13. That's how my hits have been going so far. I don't mind gambling a bit by not having Foden and Saka because I'm only going for the top 2.5% globally so I can afford to make a few bad decisions along the way. So I'll be rooting for Foden to blank this week and for Saka to blank and for Jesus to blank. It could happen. You never know. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.